Once again, we are back uh, after some technical difficulties. Uh, I have decided to uh, come home and try this again. Amen. Uh, we understand that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that I might have life and have it more abundantly. Uh, I am grateful that even in spite of the challenge, uh, on, on like challenges like tonight, uh, that God still prevails. Amen. And so we are going to uh, have prayer once again, and then we're going to get started. Father, we thank you tonight, God. We understand that no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. And God, we give you honor and glory, God, because you said in your word that victory is, is ours, says the Lord. And so we stand on every promise and decree that you've given us, God, knowing, God, that with, that, with you, uh, all things are possible. And so, God, we love you, we bless you. And I pray right now, God, for a special anointing, God, uh, right now, I pray in Jesus' name, God, that you would move on our behalf and, God, you will ex exalt us with your word. And, God, I pray right now, Lord, that you would breathe on us, that we would be, be better than how we were when we came. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, we are going to start again. Uh, as I say, we had some technical difficulties early on, and so... We have changed location, uh, but yet we are going to be uh, persistent in our uh, decree uh, as we move forward on tonight. Once again, we're talking about the principles of prayer, uh, and, and we know earlier we talked about principle being the foundational truth of uh, the proposition that serves as the foundation for a system of belief or behavior, and that that system of belief is uh, where we find why we pray. Uh, the principle of prayer is found in uh, the first thing that God tells us in, in Hebrews 11 and 6, and it's called a word called faith. Faith is our first principle uh, because we understand that he says, uh, without faith, it's impossible to please God. He that comes to him, the first thing we have to believe that he is God. So in other words, as, as I, I know I'm trying to backtrack and it sounds like I'm hurrying, uh, but I'm just trying to cover some of what I started before we started uh, suffering from some of our difficulties. Uh, we have to know who God is, not from what we have been told about him, but from what we know about him. You've got to know God for yourself. And, and I understand the scripture tells us that we're supposed to train our child up. Uh, we're supposed to teach them. The Old Testament tells us to teach them in the morning, teach them in the afternoon, you know, teach them at night. And, 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 and that's a part of the process of knowing about him, hearing about him. But at some point, you've got to know him for yourself. Go back to Sunday once again. Uh, Sunday, we talked about Jesus asked the question, who does, uh, who do they say the son of man is? But then he asked another question because you're telling me about who they think I am, but who do you say I am? And so we're in a place now that we got to know God for ourselves. And prayer is so prevalent right now. It's so important. And so the first principle of prayer is faith. We must, uh, Pray in faith. Let's look at James chapter 1 uh, real fast. Uh, I'm not going to hold you long, uh, but I'm going to try to get through what I need to get through. James, go to James. James chapter 1. James chapter 1, uh, looking at verses 5 through 8, and it says, watch this. Uh, whenever you're praying, you should be praying with faith. Believing that you're going to receive whatever you asked of God. Amen, somebody. Why talk to God if you're not going to believe you're going to get what you asked for? And then part of faith is believing that even if it's denied, 
I mean, even if it's delayed, sorry, does not mean it's been denied. Sometimes there's some prep work that goes on on our behalf where God is prepping us, getting us prepared for what we've been asking for. Because sometimes when we're asking for something, we're not really ready for it. Amen, somebody. And so it says right here in verse number five and first, I mean, in James chapter one, verse number five, it says, but if anyone is def deficient in wisdom, get this, he said, he should ask God who gives to all generously without reprimand and it will be given to him. Verse six says, but he must ask in faith without doubting. Of course, he's talking about wisdom, but this applies to not just only wisdom, it applies to anything that you're asking God for. You've got to believe that God is one that will reward you or give it to you if you're asking in faith. You've got to believe that when I ask, I'm going to receive. You've got to believe that it's already on the way even before I ask because he knows what I have, what I stand in need of. And because he's an all-seeing God, God, all-knowing God, that means that he is going to provide the very thing that I need. He's going to give me his best. Sometimes the delay means that what I've been asking for is not uh, the best of what I really need. Sometimes I'm settling in my prayer because I, I'm at a place of panic. But if I can ever get to a place to trust God enough to say, God, what you have for me is what I desire. Because God only wants the best for his, his children. So he said, but he must ask in faith without doubting. For the one who doubt is like a wave of sea blown, tossed around by the wind. For the person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Verse 8 says, he is double-minded individual, unstable in all his ways. So if I'm going to doubt God when I'm asking God for something that I need, then he's saying, he's letting me know that I ought not to be expecting anything. Amen. Have you ever uh, needed something and you you asked the person, but then you told them, uh, well, I know you ain't going to give it to them. Then guess what? They're, they're saying, uh, well, since you already know I ain't going to give it to you, then why are you asking me for it? And that's how God looks at the if I'm not going to ask in faith, believing that I'm going to get what I'm asking for, no matter how big or small it is, then why am I coming to God? The first principle is we got to pray in faith. Amen. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew 21 and 22. Pray in faith. Pray in faith. Tell yourself, I got to keep praying in faith. I've got to believe that whatever I'm asking God for, uh, that's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to do that and more because that's the God we serve. He doesn't do the bare minimum. Uh, he knows how to uh, do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think. Uh, amen. So he can do so much more than what we are asking for because that's the God we serve. Let's look at Matthew 21 and 22 and say, whatever you ask in prayer, if you believe, you will receive. You've got to ask believing that God will. Amen, somebody. I, I know sometimes it sounds so cliche uh, in the Bible, I mean, uh, in the church where we say, well, you know, God, God will do it. But you've got to believe. It. Don't just say it. You've got to believe it. Other words, why say it? Uh, Romans 10 and 17 lets us know that Faith comes by hearing. So the more I hear the word, the more I repeat the word to myself, the more my faith is built up. So now when I'm praying, I'm thinking about what he said. Because uh, uh, what he says lets me know what I can have. It's just like this. Sometimes you ought to write down uh, what God told you. And then, right on the other side, how many times he came through with what he said. Because God will never fail us. He will never let us down. He is faithful and just. That's the kind of God we serve. Amen, somebody. 
so the next principle is we want to look at is we must pray with humility. Amen. That simply means we need to humble ourselves. Can I tell you something? God don't owe you nothing. He don't owe me nothing. So we ought to be humble when we come to God. Humble means that I'm taking, uh, I'm taking the low road. Or better yet, uh, I'm having, uh, I'm not putting myself in a position where I'm being boastful. Uh, I'm not putting myself in a position where I feel like uh, I, I deserve something and so you better do it. No, humble means that uh, I feel like I'm undeserving, but yet God is, is going to bless me in spite of me. And so uh, we must pray with humility. Let's go look at James, James again, James chapter four this time. Humility, humility. James chapter four. Amen. James chapter four. James chapter four, verse, uh, verse six. Let's look at it. Verse six says, he says, but he gives greater grace. Therefore, it says, get this, God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Amen, somebody. He opposes those who have this puffed up spirit who thinks they are more than what they are. Amen, somebody. Uh, we just watched a lot of that on last night. If you watched the debate, uh, you saw somebody who was humble on one side and want somebody who was puffed up on the other side. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. That's just a great example. But <clears throat> God opposes the proud, but he says, but he gives grace to the humble. That means that he extends more love towards the one that will humble themselves. Amen, somebody. We've got to learn how to be humble. Uh, two things under this pray with humility. Uh, we've got to learn how to be humble before God. Amen. Humble before God. And we see that uh, when we look at 2 Chronicles. Let's go to the Old Testament real fast. 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 7, verse 14. And we quote it all the time. But I want us to look at it for our, for our reading uh, and also for the hearing. Uh, and it says, and let me go to the King James. I want us to read in the King James. King James says, <clears throat> King James says, if my people who people? His people. Those that know him. Which are called by my name. Those who have accepted his son as their Lord and Savior. Uh, those are the people that he's saying. Ones who uh, call themselves Christian. Call themselves believers. Call themselves saints of God. Uh, these are who he's talking to. Watch this. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, first stipulation, shall humble themselves. You see that? Humble. He's saying that if my people who are called by my name shall first thing, humble themselves. Amen. And then pray. You've got to be humble to come to God. Don't come to God saying, God, you better. You know, God don't have to do nothing, amen, but be God. But he says, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. We talk about in Hebrews 11 and 6 where he talks about the fact that we have to be uh, diligently seeking him. We got to seek his faith. How do I seek his faith? Seek his faith by uh, staying in prayer, staying in communication, Prayer is simple. It's simply me uh, getting to know God by talking to God on a daily basis. Pray without ceasing. Men ought to 
always pray. We, we as a body of Christ should always be in contact with God. Seek my faith and turn from thy wicked ways. If I'm seeking his faith, that means I'm leaving something behind. And then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. We need our land healed today. Uh, let's, let's go to uh, Hebrews 4 and 16 real fast. Hebrews 4 and 16. I know I'm moving uh, swiftly, but with all that has gone on tonight, uh, just trying to make sure that I'm able to get this in in case uh, we have some more difficulties. Amen. Hebrews 4 and 16, and it says in, first, in verse 16, he says, Therefore let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and find grace whenever we need help. So he says, let us confidently approach. That word confidently means, simply means that I'm coming in confident that I know that when I come to him, I'm able to get whatever I need. It doesn't mean that I'm coming to him with the wrong spirit or the wrong attitude, but I'm confident because I know what he has promised me. And so I come to him because I know what Jesus Christ has done he opened the door to allow me to be able to step in and talk to God on a person-to-person -person level. Amen, somebody. I, I don't need somebody to stand in the gap no longer. I have someone who's standing in, in heaven, who's representing me. And so uh, I can come with confidence, but still I don't come with arrogance. Amen, somebody. And so let's look at Ephesians chapter 3 real fast. Since we are around the corner from it. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12. And he says, in whom we have boldness. Back up. Uh, verse 11 says, this was according to the eternal purpose that he accomplished in Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 12 says, in whom we have boldness and confident, and confident access to God. We have boldness because of the fact, not what we've done. We have boldness because of what Jesus has done. And because of his work on the cross, we come boldly knowing now that we have an adversary. I mean, we have uh, someone who has stepped in the gap. We have this, uh, this person in that of Jesus Christ now who has given us access to come to God with confidence. Uh, he says that uh, we have boldness and confidence to access to God because of Christ's faithfulness. It's through his faithfulness. What faithfulness? When he died on the cross. The old songwriter said he would not come down to save himself, but he decided to save not only me, but the world. Amen. Uh, and so we, the first principle is we must pray in faith. Second principle is we must pray with humility. And so and under that umbrella, uh, humility before God. So we're praying, uh, we're praying with humility before God. And then the next thing under that umbrella is we're praying, we have humility in prayer. Amen. We have humility in prayer, which means uh, we stay humble in our prayer. Uh, we, we don't we don't get wh where we feel like uh, you know we you know we got all these big words and 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 we're trying to impress God with our prayer. That's not what we're we're supposed to be doing. Amen. Let's look at Luke uh, Luke eighteen nine through fourteen real fast. Luke eighteen. Luke chapter 18, 9 through verse 14. Amen. Starting at verse number 9, and it says, Jesus also told this parable to some who were confident that they were righteous and looked down on everyone else. Amen. 
two men went up to the temple to pray. One of Pharisees and the other a tax collector. Amen. And verse 11 says, And the Pharisee stood and prayed about himself like this. Get this. God, I thank you that I am not like other people. Uh, amen. You hear a lot of people putting down other folk as though they're so much better. And, and the only thing that makes you better in, in your own eyesight is they don't know your sin because you feel like you know their sin. Amen, somebody. Amen goes right there. But he says, uh, the Pharisee stood praying about himself like this. God, I thank you that I'm not like other folk, extortionists, unrighteous people, adulterers, or even like the tax collector. And so this is what I'm talking about, humility in prayer. Uh, his prayer had no humility in it. He was comparing himself to other people. But the Bible tells us that we ought to compare ourselves to God. The Bible said that we ought to have the mind of Christ. Amen. And so whenever you're comparing yourself, you need to compare yourself to someone who's superior than you, not someone who is beneath you. If you ever want to gauge where you are, uh, don't, don't look at someone who is sitting at home on the couch every day, uh, every Sunday, instead of uh, someone who has a relationship with Christ. Amen. And so he says here, uh, that's not being humility. That's not having a, uh, being very, uh, having, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? That's not being humble. Amen. That's what I'm trying to say. Verse 12 says, uh, he, he goes on to keep fast twice a week. I give a tenth of everything I get. Amen, somebody. And the, then verse 13 said, the tax collector, however, stood far off. And would not even look up to heaven, but he beat his breast, said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner that I am. Amen. When you are being humble, when you have a, uh, a humble spirit, then you understand that uh, you understand the value of grace and mercy because you understand that everything God does for you, you are undeserving of. And so because you're undeserving of it, you have a greater appreciation for what God is doing in your life. And so it's easier for you to have a spirit of, 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 of exaltation, to have a spirit, an attitude of gratitude because you realize that what I have, if it wasn't for God, if it wasn't for the Lord, so you are willing to give God greater glory. You're willing to praise him. You're willing to tell him thank you because that's the problem with a lot of saints today. We don't tell God thank you enough. Amen. And so uh, let's go back to James real fast. Uh, James chapter 4. Verse number 10. And we're talking about uh, humility in prayer. James chapter 4, verse 10. Amen. It says right here, it says, humble yourself before the Lord and he will exalt you. So in other words, when you come to God, even though you're coming with a spirit of boldness because you realize what Christ has done for you, for you to be able to come into the room. It, when you get there, you ought to humble yourself. When you get in the presence of God, you ought to humble yourself. Humble, humbly, hum, humbling yourself simply means that I'm bowing down to God. That's why when we pray, uh, the old saints would get on one knee. Old deacon would get down for the church on one knee because whenever you're praying, you ought to be in a position of humbleness. And what greater position than to be on your knees uh, uh, looking down because you're undeserving in a way of even looking towards him. That, that's what the tax collector was saying. Uh, have mercy on me. Amen, somebody. That's what God is looking at. People that are willing to humble themselves before him 
and the Lord, he will exalt you. Amen. There's a scripture in, in uh, uh, 1 Peter, I believe chapter 5, talks about how he will exalt you in due season. Amen. So the first principle is we must pray in faith. Second principle is we must pray with humility. And then the third principle that we're going to look at is we must pray in harmony with God's will. Amen, somebody. That's the hardest part uh, about praying is because we have so much we want to tell God. We have so much that we want to ask from God. We have so much that we want to pray about other folk because uh, they done got on our nerves. But we've got to learn how to pray what God's will is. Our will has to come in harmony with God's will. That's the way, that way we can see God's purpose in our life coming to fruition. Amen, somebody. And so let's go to 1 John. 1 John. 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. Amen. And verse 14 says, get this, and this is the confidence that we have before him, that whenever we ask anything, watch this, according to his will, not according to our will. Amen. We want our will done all the time. But we've got to lay our will down and accept his will. Our prayer ought to be, Lord, help my will to be, help your will become my will. So that when I'm trying to do my will, I'm actually doing your will. Amen. So he says uh, that this is the company we have before him. That whenever we ask anything According to his will, he hears us. We have this confidence when we start praying for God's will. What is God's will? God's will is anything that pleases him over our own personal uh, uh, desires. So that means that God wants us to uh, grow spiritually. Uh, there are things spiritually that God wants for us. Uh, God's will is for us to become better Christian. God's will for us is for us to be able to treat not just those folk that live in the house with us, not those who are we consider our friends or our cliques in the church, but God's will is for us to love everybody the same. God's will for us is us not to come in and just speak to those who we've been knowing a long time, but God's will for us to speak to everybody that's in the body of Christ. Uh, I, don't, I, I just don't get how we, we have certain people we want to speak to and we want to walk by the rest of them as though we don't know them. And then we're the first one who want to stand up in the church and talk about love. Well, you know, we need to love. Yeah, we do. <laughs> that, that's a part of God's will for, is for us to love our enemies, love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. I, I know I'm talking to somebody. Verse 15 says, and if we know that he hears us, in regards to whatever we ask, then we know that we have the request that we have asked from him. So if we're praying according to his will, we know that he hears us. And we know that, and if we know that he hears us in regards to whatever we have asked, this is in according to his will, then we know that we have the request that we have asked from him. Everything is tied to God's will. Prayer should be about God's will. When Jesus prayed, it was always about the will of the Father. It was never anything personal for him because everything that was personal to him was, was wrapped around God's will. That's how we should be praying. Whatever God's will is, find, how do I find God's will? I find God's will by talking to God, by being in prayer, by studying his word. That's how I find out what his will is. Amen, somebody. And so, uh, our third point is we must pray in harmony with God's, God's will. Let me, let me show you how important it is to pray uh, in God's will. Let's go back to James. James chapter 4. Let's go back real fast. I'll show you how important it is to be in 
harmony with God's will. James chapter 4. Let's go back. Verse number 3. Verse 3. And it says, uh, uh, well, you know what? Let me, let me just read 1, 2, and, and 3. But 3 is what I really wanted to highlight. Let's go back. It says, where do the conflicts and where do the quarrels among you come from? Is it not from this, from your passions that battle inside of you? Amen. Verse 2 says, you desire and you do not have. You murder and envy and you cannot obtain. You quarrel and fight and you do not have because you do not ask. So there's a war. Paul talks about in Romans chapter 7. There's a war that goes on in us. And when our flesh uh, is winning the war, then guess what? Our spiritual man is the one that suffers. And our relationship with Christ suffers. Verse 3 says, And you ask and do not receive because you ask wrongfully so you can spend it on your passion. In other words, what James is letting us know is there's a battle that goes on on the inside of us. And when that battle is fleshly driven, it causes conflict. And because it causes conflict, now when we're talking to God about asking God for things, uh, because we're asking out of our flesh, he's letting us know that because we have the wrong motive, King James says, we ask in a miss. But because we have this, the wrong motive when we ask, God is not going to honor it. So in other words, we have to come with the right motive. The right motive. The right motive means that I'm asking according to his will, his purpose for my life, his plan. That, that's, that's the right motive. When I come to God, I'm asking him something that I need to help me, not only physical, physically sometimes, but spiritually all the time. Because my spirit man is what needs to be built up. It's because I'll get in trouble if I don't operate spiritually sometime. Amen. And so uh, I have several scriptures here and I really don't want to get into all of them uh, because I don't want to get uh, stuck where I am. But let's look at uh, Matthew's chapter 6. Matthew's chapter 6. And I think some of these I'm just going to give to you, allow you to write down and, and read in your leisure. Uh, uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. We're talking about uh, praying in harmony with God's will. That's one of the principles. Amen. Matthew 6, 9 and 10, it says, So pray this way. Watch this. Uh, Our Father in heaven. I'm reading from New, uh, the New English translation. It says, May your name be honored. Hallowed be thy name. Verse 10. May your kingdom come. May your will. Get that. Be done on earth as it is in heaven. This was the model prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. This is the prayer as children we were taught uh, how to pray. When we were taught how to pray as children, this is what our parents uh, uh, had us memorize this prayer. But notice he said, may your kingdom come, may your will be done. Here on earth as it is in heaven. In other words, I need what you have purposed for me to be done in my life right now. Amen, somebody. So we have to pray in harmony with God's will. Amen, somebody. Let's look at John. Look at John. Look at John. Look at John. Uh, look at John. John chapter 4 is what we want to look at. John chapter 4. Remember, we're praying in harmony with God's will. That's one of the principles of prayer. If we're ever going to get to a place uh, where we can see the final outcome of our prayers, we have to use these principles to apply them in our, our prayer life. Amen. John chapter 4. In verse 34. Amen. Amen. John 4, 34. And it says, Jesus said to them, watch this. 
Jesus is talking about his purpose for coming to down here on earth. He says, Jesus says to them, watch this. My food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to complete his work. He said, my food. In other words, my desire, what sustains me, what, what uh, keeps me, what helps me, what motivates me is that to do the will of the one that sent me. How many today realize that my survival is, is to do the work of God, to do the will of God? And how many of us are actually doing the will and the work of God? <clears throat> you know, there's a difference. I keep saying that there's a difference in doing church work and doing the work of the church. Now is a greater time than any for us to reach outside of the walls. Because most of us ain't coming in the walls anyway. So the best thing for us to do now is operate where we are. Because we're outside of the walls of the church, of the church building. Because we are the church. So now is a great time to start doing the work that we have been commissioned to do. Jesus is a great example. He's letting us know that my food is to do the will of God. The very thing that sustains me is that that I that I'm doing for God. Amen. Amen, somebody. Uh, let's look at Luke. Since we're right at John. Luke chapter 22. And, and verse 42. Luke chapter 22. And verse 42. Amen. Luke 22. Verse 42, and he said right here, uh, because he just said, my food, my desire, uh, the thing that sustains me, the thing that I hunger for is to do the will of the Father. And so here it is. We find him in verse 42 saying, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me, yet not my will, but your will be... His food was to do the will of him that sent him to complete the work. Jesus came to die. And every time he prayed, it was always about the will of the Father. That was his desire. And let me help you today. If you pray for the will of God to be done in your life, and you accept the will and the steps being ordered, then it makes it easier for you to accept God's will because you realize that as long as I'm operating in the will of God, then I'm not operating by myself and I'm not operating on my own, but I have God with me, carrying me, carrying me through my cross, carrying me through my trials. Amen, somebody. And so here it is. He's, he's saying, Father, if you're willing to take this cup away, if you're willing to take away my purpose, if you're willing to take the plan you have, it, 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 whatever your will is, because we have to come to a place where we accept what God will is for our life. We have to get there. And here it is, he's praying and saying, you know what? I've come to a place to realize because I already know that my food, my desire, what sustains me, the very thing I desire and hunger for is to fulfill your will. And so and even in my moments of weakness, even in my moments of struggle, the spirit on the inside of us ought to stand up and say, you know what? Nevertheless, I know how, I know there's a way I want to go, but nevertheless, whatever God's will is, whatever God's way, that's the way. I'm going to go. Matthew, go back. Matthew 26 and 44. Oh, God. This is blessing me. Matthew 26 and 44. Matthew 26 and 44. Uh, and, 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 and I can just be real with you. Leaving the church because of the, the difficulties that, that I was running into and driving home, uh, that was a part of me that said, you know what? Uh, you, you've tried. Uh, just go on home, uh, sit down with the wife, eat dinner, and just do it another day. But there's something in me 
that said no. Not my will, but thy will be done. Amen, somebody. Uh, verse 44 says, uh, So leaving them alone again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same thing once more. Here it is. He was struggling, y'all. He was struggling with what he had to do. But just like I just showed you, even in his struggle, he still came to the place where it's not about me and what I want and my desire, but it's about God's will. And that's what we have to wrap our head around is what has God purpose for our life? What is God's plan for our life? What is his will for our life? And so before we make crucial decisions that are going to impact our life from now until, we need to find out what God has to say. Because whatever God has to say, that settles it when it comes to our life. First Peter. I said I wasn't going to go over all these. The Lord have mercy and got good to me. I can't, I can't stop myself. First Peter, chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3. Amen. Somebody type amen on the screen. Amen. First Peter uh, chapter 3. Verse number. Uh, trying to read my writing. Uh, we're going to look at verse 12. Uh, that might be a 3. I, I was. Uh, there it is right there. Verse 12. First Peter chapter 3. Verse number 12. And it says. Uh, for the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, watch this, and his ears are open to their prayer. That word righteous means I'm in right standing with God. So that means if I'm in right standing with God, that means that I'm living according to God's word. I'm living according to God's plan. I'm living uh, according to uh, his will. And so he says, and and and, and that's because of who has connected me to God, Jesus the Christ. For the eyes of the Lord are open, the eyes are open, and watch this, and his ears are open to their prayer. As long as I'm in the right place, right relationship with God, as long as I'm in harmony with God's will, not only is his eyes open uh, upon me, that means he sees everything that's going on in my life. He already knows what my circumstances are. He already knows what your situation is because he sees you. But not only that, but his ears are open. That means that he is always listening for your very cry. He's always listening for you to get uh, heaven involved in your earthly situation. But he also says, but the Lord's face, watch this, is against those who do evil. So it's all about the right relationship, the right position. It's all about being in the will of God. Amen. Amen. Uh, Proverbs 28 and 9. We're going to make a, uh, a jog around the track. I'm going to go back to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 28, verse number 9. Proverbs, Proverbs 28 and 9. Get there with me. Proverbs 28 and 9. Watch this. The one who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. Amen. Let me, let me read that from the King James. I know some of you might have King James. And he says in King James, he that turneth away his ear from hearing the law. In other words, the ones who turn away from the word of God, from even hearing the word of God, those who have hearts have been hardened and you no longer want to hear the word. Uh, you no longer want to be associated with the body of Christ. He said, even their prayer should be abomination. In other words, he's letting us know that word abomination uh, is a disgusting thing. It's what the breakdown uh, in the Hebrew it says it's a disgusting thing. So that means that if I turn away from God, if I turn away from his will, then when I pray, it is abomin it is disgusting to him because of where I am. Now, let me say this here, because I know the songwriter said he still hears a sinner prayer. 
And he does. But it has to come from a repentant heart. Amen. I, I'm not coming and praying to him because now all of a sudden I need something from him. There is a difference. Because, watch this. I was thinking about this earlier today. Uh, how many of us have people that we talk to on a daily basis? And, and so now, if they call us and ask us for something, we have no problem assisting them. Because we talk to them. There's a, there's a relationship there. You know, there uh, is, is a closeness there. There's a bond there. And so now if they call and, and ask you, you know, you're like, girl, please, yeah, you know, you can, I can do that for you. But you call one of your, your guys, it's like, no problem, doc, I got you, man. But how many of us have people that the only time their name pops up on our phone, our first thought is, what do they want? Because they never call until they need something. And I'm sure God is a compassionate God. But I'm sure God looks at us the same way and says, here is somebody who talks to me on a daily basis, never ask me for anything, but just call to tell me thank you sometime. He just talks to me about the goodness of me. He just talks to me about all that I've been doing in his life. And he's excited about what I'm getting ready to do. And, and he knows down the road what's coming. And, and so, uh, uh, whenever he calls, I'm excited to hear from him. And then there's the one that God says, not you again. Because the only time I hear from you is when you want something. Amen, somebody. Oh, God. I bless your wonderful name. And that's how it is. Uh, our son, I love him dearly, y'all. Uh, he's my seed. Uh, he's handsome like his daddy. <laughs> Uh, but whenever he texts, I know there is something coming behind that that he needs. And a lot of times, he only texts when he needs something. So there's some prep work that goes there because it's, hey, Pops, uh, how you doing? How the church doing? And I already know the setup is right there. Now it's, I need you all to send me. But our daughter, on the other hand, never asked for anything. And so we send her or we do for her because if, if, if we didn't, she'll never get anything because she never asked for nothing. Amen. And so that's how God is with us. When, when you are constantly begging, because you don't have to beg God for what he's promised. So you just have to uh, give thanks Show love. <laughs> Show God that he's first in your life. And God will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings that you don't have room enough to receive. Amen, somebody. Uh, Pastor Helton, my old uh, shepherd back before I moved here, before uh, Sister Lyons fell in love with me and started chasing me. Amen. Uh, he used to always tell a story about his son, Rod, who he said that uh, one time he gave him some money. And Rod said, what would you give me that for? I ain't do nothing. He said, yeah, you're right. You didn't do nothing. But he said, just imagine if you did something, how much more I would give you. Amen. And so our third principle is we must pray in harmony with God's will. Watch this here. I want you to get this. With faith in God, that's where we started. And with humility towards him. That was the second principle. And with humility towards him. Watch this. We will gladly yield to his will for our, our life. So that means if we have faith in him. And we, have, and we are uh, humble. Or we have humility towards him. It's easier for us to yield to his will. Amen somebody. Uh, we got two more principles, but we don't have a lot of lot of lot of scriptures to go uh, with it, so we're not we won't, we won't be long. Uh, uh, fourth thing I want to look at is we must pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Somebody. That means that I ought to be thankful for what God has already done. Colossians chapter four. Let's go there. 
In fact, you know what? We're in the Old Testament. Let's let's just go to Psalms 100. Psalms 100, since we already over here. That way when we move from here, we won't have to come back. Psalms 100. Psalms 100. Amen. I hope this is blessing somebody. Because it certainly has been blessing me. Psalms 100. And he says, uh, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I'm just going to read it all because it's, it's so short. Uh, unto the Lord, all ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Watch this. Come before his presence with singing. Verse 3. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. I started off by saying, if you come to God, you've got to believe that he is God. So it says, know ye that he is God. Know that the Lord is he is God. Watch this. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Verse 4 says, watch this. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. So when I come into the presence of God in prayer, in celebration, I ought to still have thanksgiving on my lips. Even in prayer, I ought to be thankful for what he's already done. In fact, I ought to be thankful for what I'm getting ready to ask him because I know that I'm praying according to his will so I know God's going to do it for me. So he says, into his gates of thanksgiving, into his courts with praise, be thankful unto him and bless his name. Verse 5, for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Notice, we have to have thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. It's not always about coming to God, asking God for something, but sometimes your prayer ought to be about thanksgiving. Thanking God for what he's done. Thanking him for what he didn't allow happen in your life. Thanking God for shielding you. Thanking God for keeping you from danger seen and unseen. You ought to have a thankful heart today because not all of us have been ones who uh, didn't catch the virus. But I'm thankful that in spite of me catching, his grace and mercy kept me. Amen. And so let's look at 1 Thessalonians, scripture that you know. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, a scripture that you know oh so well. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Amen, somebody. Oh, God bless you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. Let's go there. And it says, always rejoice. Amen. Verse 17 says, constantly pray. Verse 18, watch this. So you got to rejoice. You got to pray. And then verse 18 says, in everything, give thanks. In every situation that you go through, you ought to know that God is going to bring you through. So you ought to be able to give thanks, not for what you're going through, but for uh, how you're going through it, because you are at peace even in the midst of your storm. So he says, and everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. When you know that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. When you know that the weapon will form, but it ain't going to take you out. You can give thanks in the midst of your storm. When you know that uh, even though you're short this month, but you understand that the same God that took uh, two fish and five body loaves and fed uh, over 5,000. You know that he can take your little bit as long as you've been faithful to him and as long as you've been uh, uh, in harmony with his will. You know that God knows how to stretch your little and make it last and accomplish what it needs to accomplish. Colossians, man. Colossians. Colossians chapter 4. 
Colossians chapter 4, verse 2 says, Be devoted to prayer, keeping alert in it with thanksgiving. Oh, my God. Be devoted to prayer. Being devoted to prayer means that uh, I'm going to make sure that every day I pray. And I'm asking us, because this is the time that we sh that we need to be praying. The church need to be praying more than ever. I'm asking you to be in devoted prayer. Praying for our country. Praying for our leadership. Praying for our pastors. Our spiritual leaders. Because uh, we are in some trying times right now. And let me say this. Think about what you're going through. And then think about your shepherd that God has placed over you. What they have to deal with. Because they have to be concerned about your well-being as well as their own and their own family. And so uh, a lot of, there's a lot of stress. Not just on the people of God, but on the pastors of God as well. And I keep saying, pray for them. Pray for us. Don't talk about us. Don't put your mouth on us. Unless it's in prayer. Because we need your prayers. Pray for. Uh, be in prayer for. Uh, this election. Amen. Be devoted to prayer. Pray about this election. Pray that God's will. His purpose is done. And whatever his will and purpose is. Pray that we be able to accept it. Amen. <clears throat> God knows what he's doing. So, be in prayer. If you're not happy with who's in the office, you should be praying now that God will remove. Because this is one thing that I do know. Whenever the people of God, the children of Israel, were going through a rough path because they were under a wicked king, when they turned back to God in prayer and cried out, God always delivered them. And that's why prayer is so important right now. It's so important for us to be in prayer. We ought to be crying out because of what we are suffering through right now. So he says, be devoted in prayer. Keep alert in it with thanksgiving. That means that I ought to always have a, an alert mind, alert heart. But I also ought to have some thanksgiving wrapped around that prayer. Because God has been good to all of us. Last one, uh, after we must pray with thanksgiving, the last one is we must pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Pray in the name of Jesus. Let's look at Ephesians. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 20. Let's go there. And it says. Uh, let's back up. Uh, <laughs> uh, verse 17. Let's, uh, let's read verse 17. It says. For this reason do not be foolish. But be wise. By understanding what the Lord's will is. Get that. For this reason do not be foolish. But be wise. By understanding what the Lord's will is. Verse 18 says, And do not get drunk with wine, which is a debauchery, but be filled by the Spirit. Amen. He says, do not get drunk with wine. Amen. Verse 19 says, Speak to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, Singing and making music in your heart to the Lord. So in other words, we ought to have this spirit of thanksgiving. Amen. Even when we talk to one another, when we greet one another in the church, we ought to have this, uh, we ought to have this spirit of celebration. Verse 20 says, Always give thanks to God, the Father, for each other in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Verse 21 says, and submitting to one another 
out of the reverence for God. But notice he says, always give thanks to God, the Father, for each other in the name of our Lord and Jesus Christ. So in other words, I ought to have this spirit of thanksgiving for everybody, not for just those that I choose uh, to celebrate, but I ought to have the spirit of thanksgiving for everybody in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's look at John. Uh, and I think uh, with John, I'm going to stop uh, right there. Amen. Let's go to John. John chapter 15, 15 and 16. John 15. Amen. John 15. I got. <clears throat> John 15. John 15 and 16. And it says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit. Fruit that remains. So that whatever you ask, watch this. The Father in my name, he will give you. You hear that? He chose you. And he wanted you to bear good fruit. Not just any fruit. Fruit that's pleasing to him. And he says, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Let's go over to uh, chapter 16 in John. Let's go to, amen, I thought it was just, chapter 16, amen. Chapter 16, verse 23 and 24, and that's going to be our last for tonight. Uh, and you can write these other down, but I'm not going to read them. Or uh, Also, you can look at Hebrews uh, chapter 7, verse 24 and 25. Amen. As well as Hebrews 4, uh, 14 and 15. Uh, you can read those in your leisure, but I'm going to stop right here. Uh, I have some hunger pains, in which I know uh, I can go without. Uh, but it is that time. John 16, amen. John 16, chapter 23 and 24. Watch this, it says, At that time you will ask me nothing, and I will tell you the solemn truth. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. I just told you, one of the principles is praying in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Verse 24 says, until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive it so that your joy may be complete. Asking, praying in the name of Jesus puts the seal on your prayer. Because the name of Jesus has so much power that even the word says, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess at the name of Jesus. And so when you apply his name in your prayer, it gives you authority. Amen, somebody. And so he, uh, one of the principles is we must pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, God bless you is my prayer. I'm grateful that uh, I was able to come home and, and finish this, this lesson. Uh, I'm even more grateful uh, uh, because it blessed me, and I pray that it bless, bless you as well. And, and I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm grateful because the enemy didn't get victory tonight. Uh, he was trying to uh, stop me, uh, stop this word, but I... Uh, uh, God's word will always prevail. And so I want to thank uh, all of you for tuning back in. And I want to thank my wife uh, because she uh, kept our little dog. Because if not, y'all would have heard him barking at every sound. Uh, because that's what he does. He barks. And, and so the same way his he barks is the same way uh, we ought to be in prayer. Amen. Uh, and so uh, 
I'm grateful for for her uh, <clears throat> assisting me, like keeping him quiet and downstairs. Let's go into prayer. Amen. Father, we thank you tonight. And God, we give you honor. And God, we need you in these hours, in these moments, in these minutes, in these seconds, God, of what is going on around us, God. We know that you see all. And as we just read, you hear all uh, when it comes to the righteous. And God, we know that you'll protect us and keep us in perfect peace as our mind is stayed on thee. God, we thank you in advance for what we realize you're already getting ready to do. As long as we apply the principles of prayer and we know the power of prayer, then God, we can have whatever your will is for our life. And God, we ask that your will is done. And we ask that we accept your will. And God, we know your plan and purpose. And God, we ask that you would not only uh, continue to order our steps, but God, that you would help us uh, along this journey. God, we're praying for leaders. We're praying for your people. And then, God, we're praying for this election. And God, I pray that you would spur something, stir up something in your people, all your people, God, that we will vote because it is so important. And God, I thank you in advance. And I ask that you meet us on Sunday morning once again. In Jesus' name I pray. And the church said amen. I love you. And there is nothing that you can do. Amen. God bless you.